When the governors and the multitudes had heard these things, they were stupefied. And Dadianus and the governor said to him, By Apollo, the mighty God, thy understanding has perished by reason of the strength of him which has passed over thee. Come now, thou and thy brethren who have risen from the dead and worship the great God Apollo. Jovinus answered and said to him, Curses on thee, O profane dog, and upon thy polluted Apollo with thee. Then he that had risen from the dead threw himself at the feet of the saint, saying, I beseech thee, O my Lord George, the martyr of Jesus Christ, upon whom the armies of God have looked with desire to bring him to themselves in Jerusalem, the city of Christ, to give us all together the seal of Christ and the baptism of Christ. And I beseech thee, O my Lord George, to pray for us that we may not return again to that place from which we have come. When the righteous man saw their faith, he stamped on the ground with his foot, and a fountain of exceeding clear water appeared, and they all received baptism in it by the hands of James the holy apostle, and brother of John, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And St. George made them go down into the sepulchre, and they returned there, and they were perfect in peace, and entered into paradise of their joy through the prayer of St. George. And after these things, the governors said to each other, What shall we do with this magician? And they commanded to bring the saint to the tribune. When they had brought him, they said to him, By thy sorcery thou hast shown us devils in the shape of men. So they laid him down and beat him with spiked clubs until his blood ran down upon the ground. Then the Dadinos commanded search to be made throughout all the city until they found a poor widow, woman, whose like for poverty there was not in the whole city. And he made them put the righteous man in her house, saying, I will disgrace the Galilean race. Now, when it was morning, the blessed George rose up and found his body healed of its wounds, and the whole house was filled with light. When the soldiers who were with him in the house saw the great light, they all fell upon their faces, and the Lord stayed his chariot over the place where the saint was in command of the archangel, Salathiel, to minister to the righteous man. And the Lord filled him with strength, and he went up to heaven in glory. And St. George took hold of the soldiers, raised them up, and comforted them, and he sent them on their way in peace. Then he stood up in the house of the poor widow woman and said to her, Give me some bread to eat, for I have eaten nothing for six days. The poor widow answered, Forgive me, master, but I have no bread in my house. St. George said to her, What God dost thou believe on? The widow woman answered, I believe on Apollo. The blessed man said to her, Verily, it is for this reason that thou hast no bread in thy house. And the woman saw that his face was bright and shining like that of an angel of God. Then she said, I will go and seek after bread for this holy man of God. Peradventure I may find favor with my neighbors. When the widow had gone out, the righteous man sat down, and his face shone brightly, and his back leaned upon a wooden pillar close by him, which supported one of the wooden beams that went into the roof of the house of the poor widow. And immediately the back of the righteous man touched the wood, it took root and budded, it forced its way up through the widow's roof, and towered up more than fifteen cubits above the greatest and the highest buildings of the city. And the archangel Michael came to him and brought him a table of food. And the blessed man ate and placed the heavenly bread upon the widow's table. It was filled with exceeding choice bread. And Michael blessed her house and filled it full of all good things, like the palaces of governors. When the woman came in and saw the face of St. George shining like the sun, 
and the table filled with bread and all good things and the pillar of wood that had budded, she said in her heart, The God of the Galileans has come into my house to the wretched in spirit and has helped my poverty. And she hastened and threw herself down at the feet of the righteous man and worshipped him, saying, Master, have mercy on me. St. George answered and said to her, Rise up, for I am not the God of the Galileans, but only his servant. The woman said to him, If thou art his servant, and I have found favor in thy sight, O master, let me speak before thee. The saint said to her, Speak. The woman said, I have a child, nine months old, and he is blind, deaf, and lame, and I am ashamed to show him to my neighbors. His father died and left him when he had been conceived in me four months. And since I gave birth to him, I have never allowed my neighbors to see him. If now, O Master, thy mercy will help me, I will believe upon thy God. The righteous man said to her, The grace of God shall appear today. Bring hither the child to me. And she brought the child from the third story of her house and laid him in St. George's bosom. And he prayed over him and made the sign of the cross over him and over his eyes and breathed into his face. And scales fell from his eyes and he saw immediately. His mother said to the saint, Master, let him hear with his ears and let him walk. The righteous man said to her, O woman, this is sufficient now. When I call him, he shall hear my voice and shall walk and perform my words. And she was unable to answer him a word, for she saw that his face was like that of an angel of God. Then the seventy lawless governors came out and walked about through the open spaces of the city. And when they saw the tree which, through God and St. George, towered up fifteen cubits high above the city, they were all astonished together. Dadianus said, What is this sight which has come to the city today? And why has this great and lofty tree put forth its leaves here? They said to him, This miracle has happened through George the Galilean, and the governor commanded to call St. George to him. Then he made eight executioners flog him with four fourfold leather whips until his flesh fell piece by piece upon the ground and his blood ran through his nostrils like water to the ground. He made them bring blazing torches and put them under his body and he made them bring a plank of wood and lay him upon it and they nailed his body to it with seventy nails and pulled surfer, sulfur and pitch down over it, and then set fire to it, and made it ablaze. So the righteous man yielded up his spirit, and his bones and his flesh were burned to ashes. Then Dadianus made them take his ashes up to a high mountain called Assyrian, and they scattered them on the mountain to the winds. And when the attendants had turned back and were coming to the city, Suddenly there were thunders and lightning and a mighty earthquake, so that the earth shook to its foundations. And behold, our Lord Jesus Christ came upon a cloud of light with all his holy angels praising him. He commanded the four winds of the earth to gather together the dust of the body of St. George. And he cried out with a divine voice, saying, George, my servant and my beloved, rise up from the place where thou liest, for it is I who command thee. And straightway the blessed man arose like a bridegroom, coming forth from his chamber. And the Lord embraced him, and gave him the salutation of peace, and went up to heaven in glory. Then the blessed George ran after the soldiers, saying, Wait a little for me, O my brethren, that I may come with you to these godless governors. When the soldiers saw him, they feared and marveled and said with one voice, O oh, our Lord Jesus Christ, thou art a mighty God. For thy holy name's sake, O Lord, thou hast raised up alive again the man who was burnt to ashes, which were driven hither and thither by the winds. And they cast themselves down 
in worship to St. George, saying, Master, give us the seal of Christ. When the blessed George saw their faith, he commanded, and there welled up a fountain of exceeding sweet water, and he prayed, and John the Evangelist came and baptized the ten or twenty soldiers. And the Evangelist blessed St. George and the soldiers and disappeared from them. Then St. George and the soldiers came together to the governors, and they cried out, saying, Be ashamed, O godless governors, for behold, Jesus Christ our Lord and God has raised up from the dead George, whom he scattered to the winds. And for this reason, we all now believe on him and are his soldiers. When the governors saw St. George standing there, they marveled and greatly and commanded to take him to prison until they had decided what to do with him. As for the soldiers, they gave Clecon and his three brothers, Lassiri and Dionysius and Joseph, to the wild beasts. They consummated their martyrdom, and they took off the heads of the others with a sword. And thus they consummated their martyrdom, and received the imperishable crown on the second day of the Passions. May their holy blessing be with us all forevermore. Amen. After these things, the governors commanded them to bring St. George to them secretly, that the multitude might not see that he was alive and despise them. When they had brought him, they said to him, George, we know now that thou art a mighty magician, and that there is no one like unto thee in all the world. But now, accept one hundred pounds of gold, and go forth from this city secretly, and let no one know it, that thou mayest escape these tortures and sufferings which thou hast suffered. The blessed man answered and said to them, O filthy dogs, I forsook the great wealth that my parents left me, and which amounted to more than twenty thousand pounds of gold and forty thousand pounds of silver, my numberless cattle, my male and female servants, my many horses, my ships, my large vineyards, my olive groves, and my house is beautiful, according to the opinion of this vain world. I left all these and my mothers and sisters for the name of my Lord Jesus Christ. And I endured all these sufferings at your hands for love of him whom I will never forsake. And now ye would advise me to take a thousand pounds of gold from you and to deny the God of the Christians that I might go into the pit of Amenti, like you, who are doomed to everlasting fire, and the devil, all his angels, forever. When the lawless governors heard these things, they were greatly enraged, and commanded them to bring a shoemaker and his knife, and they cut the skin of his head in pieces. They brought two red-hot nails, and drove them into his eyes, and they dug out his two eyeballs, tore out his tongue, and they put his feet in wooden fetters, and broke his ankle bones with axes. Then they took him up and laid him in prison, while there was still a little life in him, and with one accord they went their way together. And at midnight the Lord came into prison, and with his holy angels, and laid his hand upon his whole body, and healed him, and established him. And he said to him, be of good cheer, my beloved and holy valorous one, for I and my good Father and the Holy Spirit are with thee, and the day is drawing nigh in which thou shalt receive the scepter of the kingdom, and the seven crowns incorruptible, forever and ever. When the Lord had said these things to him, he embraced him and filled him with might, and he went up to heaven in glory and honor. When Dadaianus, the governor, rose up on the morrow, he said to the soldiers, Go ye to the prison, and see what has become of this Christian sorcerer. And when they had gone into the prison, they found the blessed man as if they had not tortured him at all. And they cast themselves down and worshipped him, saying, We beseech thee, O George, our master, to make us servants of thy mighty God. 
and he taught them concerning Christ, and through him they were worthy of the gift of holy baptism. Then they all came with St. George to the governor, saying, We are Christians, and servants of Christ Jesus and God. When the multitude saw St. George standing there without any harm having happened to him, and his face shining like the sun, they cried out, saying, Verily, there is no God in heaven or earth except the God of George, Jesus Christ our Lord and God, and from henceforth we are his. The lawless governors were greatly ashamed and enraged, and they commanded the soldiers to take them outside the city and to behead them with the sword. Thus they consummated their martyrdom and received the crown incorruptible forever and ever on the twelfth, the twenty-fifth day of the month. Now, there they were twenty. They were they were two thousand four hundred and eight in number besides the eight soldiers who received baptism. May their holy blessing be with us all forever. Amen. Verily, my beloved, if I were to try to describe to you all the sufferings which St. George the righteous and valiant soldier of Christ endured, time would fail me before I had recounted them all, for they are so many. Moreover, a man who passed seven years in one place, while seventy governors and their armies sat around him and tortured him, is quite without parallel in all the world and the borders thereof. Verily I am astonished, and I cross myself, and I marvel greatly, O brethren, that I can narrate the marvel-worthy marvel contests of Holy St. George the Great Luminary the beloved of God, the valiant man of Christ, who stood alone in the whole world and whom none confessed save Christ. St. George chid all the governors and rulers of the world and manifested that the Lord our strength is the God of everyone. O George, my master, by what holy name shall I call thee? Shall I call thee prophet or lawgiver? Or shall I say apostle? a martyr, a righteous man. In very truth, thou art worthy, O beloved of Christ, to be called by all these names. But if I call thee prophet, thou excellest the prophets, and if I call thee lawgiver, thou art also more excellent than the lawgivers. They sought Isaiah in twain with a wood saw once for the sake of the truth, and he died at once. So likewise with all the saints. But they saw thee, O George, my master, with a two-edged sword, and they tortured thee with the wheels, and the two-edged swords, and the axes, and for the truth's sake thou didst die three times. Moses the lawgiver saw but a little of the glory of God. But to thee, O George, my master, did God speak mouth to mouth in glory and honor. Apostles who were twelve and seventy preached in all the world, each in his own country, rebuked those who served idols, and turned them to Christ. But thou, O brilliant star, hast by thyself rebuked the idolaters and governors with their armies, and the whole world, and hast overthrown them with the fire of heaven, and hast made the name of Christ to shine throughout the whole world. Thou art more exalted than all the martyrs together, manifested forth works. It is not I who say this, but our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of kings, who testify concerning thee, saying, O blessed one, as among those born of woman there is none like unto John the Baptist, so among all the martyrs who have been and shall be, there shall never be like unto thee forever. Thou art more exalted than the righteous by reason of thy patient endurance of hungerings and thirstings and imprisonments and of the tortures which have been inflicted on thy body day and night for seven years, especially by reason of the purity of thy body. And, O Saint George, son of the truth, verily thou art more exalted than all the patriarchs and judges, and, O beloved of Christ, I beseech thee, 
not to despise the attempt of my feeble intelligence to declare thy exalted honor. Of a truth, I know, O beloved brethren, that neither I nor the feeble Theodosius, nor those who will come after me, will be able to describe this valiant soldier of Christ by reason of the great torture which he received for seven years at the hands of seventy wild beasts. But by the will of God we will go back and complete our encumium, that we may show you the end of the holy combat of the truly blessed man, St. George. And it came to pass, after these things, when the seventy governors saw that they had tortured the saint for seven years, without having vanquished his firm resolve, and that they had slain him three times, and that he had risen from the dead, they took counsel to take him by flattery, and so they commanded to bring the blessed man up to the tribune. And Dadadianus, the governor, said to him, George, I swear by my lord the sun and the moon, and by all the gods, and by their mother Artemis, that I will receive thee to myself like a beloved son, and that I will give thee everything that thou shalt ask, even to the half of my kingdom will I give thee, if only thou wilt listen to me as to a father, and wilt worship Apollo, once thou shalt become second in the kingdom. The righteous man answered and said, Where have these words of thine been until today? Behold, thou hast tortured me daily for seven years, and I have three times tasted death at thy hands, but my Lord Jesus Christ raised me up, and I escaped from the tortures which thou didst inflict upon me. If my Savior but preserve my soul within me, I will not only die once, but thousands of times, and I will never hearken to such words as these. Dost thou know, O king, that the whole that the whole race of the Galileans loves victory, and that they will fight against those who fight against them? And behold, thy words gladden me this day, and thy speech greatly persuades me. When Dianus heard these things, he rejoiced greatly and kissed the saint upon his head. The blessed man said to the governor, Stand away from me and kiss neither me nor my head until I have first worshipped Apollo, and after that do unto me what thou pleasest. And now command them to take me to the prison until tomorrow. And when today has gone and the morning has come, let the herald bid every one come to see me worship the gods. Then the governor answered him and said, Nay, far be it from me to throw thee into prison, O beloved George, and forgive me for all the sufferings which I have inflicted upon thee, for I was ignorant, and receive me as a father, and come with me into the palace where Queen Alexandra is in her inner chamber. So the governor took him, in and put him in the room where the queen was and came out to the governors and sat at meat with them. And when the evening had come, St. George bowed his knees and prayed, saying, O Lord God, there is none like unto thee among all the gods. Thou art the Lord God, and there is none that can be compared with thee. Why do the heathen cry out to the peoples imagine vain things. The governors and the rulers of the earth have gathered together, and they speak against God and against his Christ. The queen answered and said to him, O George, my master, who are these governors and rulers who are gathered together? And who is the God whom they resist? And who is his Christ? Teach me, O George, my master. And the blessed man opened his mouth and explained to her the deep questions of the old and new scriptures, and thus taught her to know the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. He showed her that it was God who had made the heavens and the earth and the sun and the moon and the stars and all creation, and he showed her that the Lord had made man out of the dust of the earth, saying, Did not God create him out of the earth? If he did not, 
Whence did he find bones and sinews and skin and eyes and tongue and throat and the senses of hearing and smelling and the creation of all these works? Did not God make all these things and man out of the clod of earth? And he filled him with understanding and wisdom of the true knowledge of God and placed him in a paradise of joy and gave him his commandments and his words to keep like a God. But the man was disobedient to his God and his enemy persuaded him and he died with him in sin and went down into Amante with him, but not forever. When God saw that which he had made in the snares of his adversary, for his goodness sake he could not bear it. And he sent his beloved Son into the world, and by the Holy Spirit he took upon himself flesh of the spotless virgin and God-bearer, Mary. And she bore as man God, perfect in truth, and he was the only man without sin. And they crucified him upon the cross by his own desire, and by the good will of the Father and the Holy Spirit, and he died for us in the flesh, that he might redeem us out of the hands of our enemy. And he returned again to his home, which is the paradise of joy. When the adversary, the devil, saw that mankind knew the true creator, God, he entered into the governors and rulers of the earth, and they made idols called them by the names of images of devils, and they worshipped them and forsook God, the Most High their Creator. The Queen said to him, Are not these idols demons? O oh, George, my master after God, the blessed man said to her, Yes, they are foul demons. The Queen said to him, O oh, George, my master, the governor, Dadianus, knoweth not, not God, no God, except Apollo. And now show me how the Son of God came into the world. And the blessed man, George, said, Hearken unto me, O Queen Alexandra, and hearken unto David, who says, Thou that sittest upon the cherubim, show thyself, lift up thy strength, and come to deliver us. And again, David saith, He shall come down like a rain upon the mown grass that is to say, to the virgin. Listen, O queen, to Habakkuk the prophet who said, O God, I heard the noises of thee, and I was afraid, and I gave attention to thy words and was speechless. Now the Holy Spirit spake all things. The queen said to him, Master, why did the prophet fear when he heard the voice of God? And why was he speechless when he considered his works? The blessed man said to her, Listen, O queen. The prophet was afraid because he knew that God would come down from heaven, and he was speechless because he knew that he would dwell within him, with men, with men. The queen answered and said to him, Verily, thou speakest well, O perfect illuminator. I beseech thee to pray to God for me, that he may drive away from me the snares of foul idols. The blessed George said to her, Believe in the holy and consubstantial trinity, and no blemish of idols shall in any wise come near to thee. The queen said, Master, I believe, but I am afraid of this sinful governor, an evil beast, for in truth he devours the flesh of men and is more lawless than any other man living upon the earth. And, O oh George, my master, keep this secret until I come to thee in the court of Christ, the mighty king. Leave me now to rest myself a little, O oh Holy Father. And God knows that I will cling fast to thee. When the morning had come, the evil and lawless governor commanded them to bring the blessed man out to him from the palace into the temple of the city. And the governor sent to him, saying, Haste thee, and come forth to me, and worship the gods, that thou mayest receive great honors from the hands of all the governors, that they may give to thee a kingly scepter, that my heart may be joyful in thee, O exceeding pleasant and beloved one, and that every one may see thee sacrifice before we go in to sit at meat. 
The blessed man said to him, Sit thee down with the other governors here, until I have sacrificed to the gods, and I will return unto thee. And the herald cried out with a loud voice, saying, Gather today, gather together today, O all ye people, into the temple, that ye may see George, the mighty Galilean, worship Apollo, the great god. And straightway the whole city was gathered together, both men and women, and they all marveled greatly at the blessed George, the mighty illuminator, and said to one another, What has happened to this righteous man? When the widow woman, whose son St. George had healed, heard these things about the blessed George, she cried out among the whole multitude, saying, O oh, George, my master! the valiant soldier of Jesus Christ, the King, my God, thou who hast wrought thousands of miracles and mighty deeds in this city, who hast raised the dead, given light to the blind, made the lame to walk, the dumb to speak, and the deaf to hear, who hast cleaned the lepers, cast out devils, and hast been an enlightener of the whole world, O George, my master, who didst make the dried up pieces of wood to bear fruit again, who didst come into my house when I was poor, and I became exceeding rich, and who when I was wandering turned, turned me to God and the true Almighty. Wilt thou, after all these things which thou hast wrought in the name of Christ, worship Apollo, the polluted, and put to shame the whole Christian people? When St. George heard her say these things, he rejoiced at the firmness of her faith, and he smiled, a holy smile, at her, and said, Put thy child down upon the ground. And she put him down. The saint answered and said to the child, Christ my God says unto thee, Arise, come to me, and perform my words. And straightway his ears heard, and his legs received strength, and he came to St. George. And St. George said to him in presence of all the multitude, Go into the temple of Apollo, and say to Apollo, O idol, blind, deaf, senseless, and foolish one, come forth, for George the servant of God calleth thee. And the little child went into the temple, and spake thus, and straightway the spirit which sojourned in the idol cried out, O Jesus, the, the, the Nazarene, thou drawest everything to thee. Why hast thou now raised up this little boy against me? And straightway the idol leaped down from his pedestal and came to the righteous man George. And the Saint George said to the idol, I am not the God of the Christians. The demon said to the saint, Bear with me a little, O Master, and I will show thee everything. And St. George said to him, Speak. And the spirit said to him, I am the god of the Hellenists, and a demon of dark and darkness. But of old times, Master, I was an angel of God. Through my disobedience to God, I commanded, and heaven was shut against me. And I was cast out from it, and became a devil. And I was jealous of mankind, for God took them up to heaven and cast me down into the depths of the earth. And therefore I am become an adversary of mankind and made them to forsake God and to worship idols that God might cast them down with us into the abyss. St. George said to him, O evil and wicked snarer, since thou didst choose darkness of thy own free will, why didst thou become an enemy of God's image? The Spirit said to him, I swear by the seven heavens of heaven, and the circle of the sun and the moon and the orbit of the abyss, if power had been granted to me, I would have led thee astray, and I go up to the gates of heaven. And I listen to the sentence of death which comes forth from the mouth of God, and I bring numbers of afflictions upon every soul of mankind, and I bring sleep upon men, and women in church, that they may not listen to the words of God, 
deliver themselves from their punishments. St. George said to him, O wretched one, thou hast laid hold upon me several times, but by the power of my Lord Jesus Christ thou didst find nothing of thyself in me. And now, O polluted one, receive the punishment which God shall bring upon thee forever and ever. Then St. George with his foot smote the earth, which opened, yawning down to hell. And he said to the spirit, Go down into the abyss, thou and the idol in which thou sojournest. He gives speech unto all the souls that thou hast led astray from God. And straightway he went down into the abyss before everyone, and the earth closed over him. Then the righteous man loosened his garments, and went into the temple, made his way to the idol called Heracles, and said to him, O wicked spirit who inhabitest this temple, come forth from it, for I am George, and I have come against thee in wrath. And straightway all the demons which dwelt in the idols disappeared. And St. George loosed his shoe latchets and went against the idols upon their pedestals. And they fell down and became as dust. And he trampled upon them all with his feet. When the priests saw the destruction in the temple, they rent their clothes and went to the governors and showed them everything that had happened. And they were filled with wrath and sent servants to bind St. George. And they brought him to the governors with a whole multitude of people following after him, all crying out, We are Christians, and we belong to the God of George. Then Dadianus, the governor, said to St. George, O oh, most wicked of all Christians, didst thou not swear to me last night, saying, I will worship Apollo? The righteous man said to him, Go, O governor, and bring Apollo to me, and I will worship him before thee. And again the governor, the blessed man, said, If thou wilt bring Heracles himself here, I will worship him before thee. The governor said to him, Where shall I find Apollo or Heracles? For according to what the priests have told me, thou hast smashed Heracles to pieces, and hast sent Apollo down into the abyss. And wouldst thou also send me thither alive, O George? St. George said to him, O senseless one, since thou art persuaded that they were not able to help themselves, how could they deliver thee in the great day of the true judge, when everyone shall receive according to what he hath done? Then the governor was greatly ashamed rose up and went into the palace and said to the queen, O queen, Alexandria, I suffer much through this race of Christians, but especially through this magician George. The queen said to him, Have I not told thee, O pestilential flesh devourer, to let this race of Christians alone? For the king of heaven is their God, and he is the God of heaven and earth, and will humbly Humble thy pride straightway. The lawless governor said to her, I think, O Queen Alexandra, that the magic of George who came to thee has entered into thee. And she said to him, My Lord Jesus Christ has called me by the holy calling of George. When the lawless governor heard the name of Christ from her mouth, he was greatly enraged and laid hold of her hair came forth to the governors and he showed her all the sufferings which could be caused by the instruments of torture and brought her to the governors and told them everything she had said. Then the governors commanded to hang her naked upon the wooden horse. But she held her peace and her eyes looked up to heaven and she said to St. George, O oh George, my master, pray for me for I suffer greatly. The righteous man said to her, Bear patiently for a little, O Queen, that thou mayest receive the incorruptible crown from the hands of my Lord Jesus Christ. The Queen said to him, Master, what shall I do, for I have not received Christian baptism? 
The blessed man said to her, Be of good cheer, for thou shalt receive baptism in the fountain of thine own blood by the stroke of the sword. And they straightway passed the sentence of death upon her, that her head was to be cut off by the sword. And when they took her out to take off her holy head, she cried out, saying, Behold, I have kept open the door of my palace to thee, O my Lord Jesus Christ. Open to me the paradise of joy, and receive me to thyself without shame. And when she had said these things, they took her off her holy head, they took off her holy head. On the fifteenth, fifteenth day, our farmer thee, and she received her crown, incorruptible, forever. After these things, the governors were gathered together to St. George and said to him, Behold, O George, thou hast destroyed the queen and hast gained an advantage over us. Magnentius, the governor, said to them, Let us pass the sentence of death upon him, lest he destroy us all. Then Dedeonus, the governor, sat down and wrote the death sentence of the blessed man George, saying, George of Melitini, the chief of the Galileans, hath set behind his back the decrees of the seventy governors of the whole world, the ministers of the victorious gods. We therefore command that his head be taken off with the sword. And know, O ye peoples, that we are guiltless of his blood. And the seventy governors signed the sentence of death. And St. George took his sentence of death in his holy hands. He came forth with gladness, rejoicing greatly. When he came out to the place where he was to consummate his martyrdom, he said to the soldiers, Brethren, wait a little for me, that I may pray to my God for these seventy lawless governors, who, as ye know, have tortured me for seven years. Now, the governors had left the saint and had prepared a feast, and were rejoicing at the death of the blessed man. Then the blessed man looked up to heaven and said, O my Lord Jesus Christ, who didst make fire come from heaven by the words of thy servant Elijah the prophet, and devour the two captains of fifty and their hundred soldiers, send down to me, O my God, of that same fire, that it may devour these seventy lawless governors. And while the words were yet in his mouth, fire came forth from heaven and devoured the five thousand godless soldiers who served them. Now the soldiers who were with St. George knew not of the matter until they had taken off his holy head. When the righteous man knew that the fire had devoured the impious ones, he bowed his knees and prayed, saying, O oh my Lord and God, the joy of my soul and spirit, the Father of my Lord Jesus Christ, hearken unto thy servant George this day, and receive me to thyself and thy abundant life. O oh my Lord, I see standing here a, a mighty multitude who think to take my body away with them when I shall soon have consummated my martyrdom. Thou knowest, O oh my Lord, that my body will not suffice for the whole world. But hear me, O Lord, at this present and great a favor this at this present, and grant a favor to my name, that through thee there may be salvation and help to all the world. So that thou, O Jesus Christ our Lord, together with thy good Father and the Holy and Vivifying Spirit, mayest have the glory which is meet for thee forever and ever. Amen. And when he had said this, Amen, the whole firmament was filled with the angels of the highest. Now Lord Jesus Christ came to him seated upon the cherubim and seraphim, in the company of prophets and the apostles, and the martyrs and all the saints and all the hosts of heaven were praising him. And all the soldiers who were with the blessed man slept and became as dead. And the Lord said to the blessed George, Hail, George. Hi, George. Hail, beloved of myself and of my angels. Hail, champion of the kingdom of heaven. Blessed art thou this day, O George, my beloved. For I have made ready for thee seven crowns of glory in the hands of my father, and he will place them upon thy head this day. 
Blessed art thou, O my beloved George, for I have prepared for thee a royal crown set with gold and pearls, and I will put it on thy head with my own hands this day. Blessed art thou this day, O my beloved George, for there is prepared for thee a great and exalted throne, beautifully set up, set with exceeding fine gold and a true priceless stone, and they will seat thee upon it this day in the highest heavens by the Holy Ghost. Blessed art thou, O my beloved George, for the pearly gates of the tabernacles of light are open to thee, and thou shalt go into the presence of the Holy Trinity, and none shall prevent thee. Blessed art thou, O my beloved George, the valiant one, for my good Father has written thy name upon the chariot of the Holy Trinity, that whosoever shall say, O God of George, help us, hear us, them thou shalt hear straightway. Blessed art thou, O my beloved George, for thou didst confess my name, and the good Father, and the Holy Ghost, before the governors of the whole world, and I will confess thee in heaven, where thou shalt be great in great light. And I say unto thee, O my beloved, that inasmuch as among all mankind, in all the whole world, there was for three years no one able to confess my name, neither elder nor deacon nor a lay person except thyself alone. And thou didst stand up before the seventy governors of the whole world? I swear by my right hand, O my beloved one, that I will establish a covenant with thee, that when thou shalt bow thyself upon thy spiritual face in heaven, and shall come with all thy congregation to worship the Holy Trinity, all the saints shall know thee by reason of the honor which I will show thee. O oh, my blessed, O oh, my beloved! And they all shall know that thou art George the beloved of God, and shall adore thee according to the command of my good Father. And moreover, behold, now, my beloved, I have joined thy name to mine, that it may be a heaven of safety throughout the whole world, that every man or woman who shall happen to be in danger by judgments, by executioners, by prisons, by seas, by waters or in harbors, or by traveling, by attacks, by thieves, by wild beasts, by fires, by lions, by violent death, and by any necessity that befell the children of men, and they cry up to me in thy name three times, saying, O God, of George, help us. I will help them quickly. And I will willful, quickly, and will fulfill everything that they shall ask with their heart. The name of every one who shall build a martyrium in thy name, or who shall cause a book of thy sufferings and thy contest to be placed in a church for reading in thy name, will I write in the book of life, and I will cause him to be in the name in the same place with thee in my kingdom forever. Whoever shall make a gift or an offering of thy first fruits in the church in thy name, or he shall feed the poor in thy name, or the widow on the day of thy glorious commemoration, to him will I give help to this in this world, and I will make him to enjoy with thee the good things of my kingdom. Whosoever shall clothe one naked person in thy name, him will I clothe with the garments of heaven. Whoever shall burn a lamp in the church in thy name, or a little incense upon him, will I make my angels shine when he shall come to me in joy. Whosoever shall give thy name to his son in faith, his heart will I comfort within him. Whosoever shall receive a stranger in thy name, his sins will I forgive him, or I will receive him into my kingdom forever. And I swear to thee my, by myself, O George, my beloved, as I have already said to thee, so I now say again to thee, that among those born of women there is none like unto John the Baptist, that among the company of martyrs there shall be none like unto thee, neither among those who have been, nor among those who shall be. And now hasten, 
my beloved, and fulfill thy dispensation, that I may take thee up with me upon the chariot of the cherubim, and give thee as a gift to my God, Father, and the Holy Spirit. And all the angels of heaven will rejoice with thee, for they are awaiting thee. As concerning thy body, I will now cause an earthquake to take place that no man among these multitudes may take thy body away with him until thy servants come to carry it away. And behold, I have already taken thy mother and thy two sisters and thy bride, who is betrothed to thee, to my kingdom before thee, that they might not see thy death in this world, but they, they might see thee and thy father and thy dear adopted father, and the great glory which I will give thee in my kingdom. And behold, for thy sake, I have destroyed the lawless governors of the whole world. When thy blood has been poured out upon the ground, the service of idols shall cease, and men shall glorify my name throughout the whole world. I will cause thy kinsmen to, to build a shrine for thee in thy city, and to lay thy body in it with honor. And after a short time, Satan will stir up a persecution against the churches, and the blood of thousands of martyrs throughout the whole world will shall be shed. And when twenty-one years have gone by, the impious governor of that time shall take counsel to destroy thy holy shrine, by reason of the mighty deeds which I will work by thee in thy holy shrine. And he will send a general with his soldiers to do this thing, but I will cause thee to destroy him by an exceeding violent death, even as thou hast destroyed these governors, and the persecution shall cease through thee. And I will send thee to destroy the impious governor, and I will seat another in his place according to the command of my good father. And he shall build for thee a splendid and beautiful shrine, and he shall glorify thy church. And the whole world shall serve me in freedom forever. And I will build thee a multitude of shrines throughout the whole world. And I will make all the nations of the world to glorify thee. And I will make thy name to fill the whole world. And I will make a multitude of gifts to thy shrine. And I will make men to celebrate thy festival in the whole world and especially the day of thy commemoration, which is the day of the consummation of thy martyrdom. And I will make all creatures upon earth to enjoy this day, and I will crown the fruits of the earth on the day in which thou art crowned, and on the day of the dedication to thee of the first fruits of the earth, which is the seventh day of the author, thy name. O my beloved George, my valiant soldier, shall be exalted in heaven and glorious upon earth forever and ever. Amen. And when the Lord had said these things to him, he filled him with power and joy. And the blessed man rejoiced greatly and exalted him, saying, I thank thee, O Lord Jesus, that thou hast honored me more than I deserve. And the Lord made the sign of the cross over him and disappeared from his sight. Then the holy man roused the soldiers, saying, Come, my brethren, and perform that which has been commanded you. He straightway stretched out his neck, and the soldiers took off his holy head. And there came forth from it blood and milk. And the Lord caused Michael to receive the blood and milk in his garment of light, and the Lord received his soul into his own hands and embraced it and he wrapped it in the purple of the ether, and ascended into the heights with it. And the whole firmament was filled with the holy angels and the company of the saints, and they hymned it until the Lord gave it as a gift to his good Father. And the Holy Spirit, and he put upon it a garment of light, and an excellent diadem of gold set with precious stones. And there were seven crowns upon the diadem, wreathed with the flowers of the tree of life. And the Lord wrote his name with the firstborn forever. And he caused the whole company of heaven and all the bands of the saints to seat him upon a throne and to celebrate a festival with him in the heavenly Jerusalem. 
And after these things there were earthquakes and thunders and lightnings and violent rains, and all the people who were standing by and the soldiers fled into the city. But Pesecrates, the servant of St. George, took outside beside the body of his master and wept over him. And there was neither rain nor storm in the place where the body of the saint was, but the whole place was full of light. Then the two servants of St. George, who were in the city, came out to their fellow servant, who was outside weeping by the body of their master. And when they saw that they had taken off his head, they straightway cast themselves down upon him, and worshipped him, and wept. And Appa Pisicrates told them everything that the Lord had said to their master, and they were exceeding glad. And they joined his holy head to his blessed body, and the head clave to it, as if it had never been cut off from it. And there was no mark of the sword stroke left upon it. And his servants said to one another, Verily, God hath received our master unto himself, and he will perform for him everything that he hath promised him. Then they took the holy body sprinkled with incense and carried it into the house which they had hired for seven years. And there was no one in it except themselves, and they hid it there. There was darkness and an earthquake, and the sea rose up over the city wishing to submerge it. And the faithful who had heard the words of the Lord when he spake with the blessed George cried out, saying, O God of George, help us in this need. And straightway the sea went down, and the storm ceased, and the sun came forth. And on the morrow, the servants of St. George sought after the governors, and when they found that the Lord had destroyed them, there was great joy throughout the whole world, and they opened the doors of the churches again everywhere. Then the servants of St. George brought exceeding fine napkins and very precious incense. They carefully prepared the body of their Lord for burial, and carried it secretly throughout the city, and laid it in a ship, and brought it to Diospolis, together with the account of his sufferings. And they found that the relatives of St. George had gone to their rest in God. Now, there was there a man, there was there a man called Andrew, the brother of St. George's mother, and he received the body of the saint into his house, rejoicing greatly. And the whole city was gathered together, and they built a shrine to him in St. George's own house, and they sent to Jerusalem and brought the archbishop, Abba Theodosius, who consecrated it on the seventh day of the month of Athor, and they laid his holy remains in it. And on this same day, that is to say, the seventh day of the month of Athor, they celebrated the holy sacrifice of the holy body and glorious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And many signs and miracles took place in the holy shrine of St. George. And St. George came down from heaven according to the command of the Lord and destroyed Eucius, the general, and plucked out the eyes of Diocletian and drove him forth from the palace and set Constantine, the emperor, on the throne in his stead. And behold, now, my brethren, who have hitherto only made known to you concerning the sufferings and honor-worthy strife which St. George, the victorious worthy warrior of our Lord Jesus Christ, endured patiently. But let us now consider the exalted honors which he received in heaven through our Lord Jesus Christ. Here then, O oh, beloved, what I, the feeble Theodotius, Theodotus, have seen with my own eyes and heard with my own ears. It came to pass in the time of the God-loving Emperor Theodosius of glorious memory that on the first day of his reign he saw a marvelous thing. He saw St. George come from heaven with great glory and the archangel Michael with him and he seated on the God-loving emperor Theodosius upon the throne of the Greeks. And his faith within him was strong in St. George all the time of his rule. 
And when he had reigned twenty years, he built a large church to the name of St. George, and he gathered together all the bishops to the consecration of the church of St. George, and he sent for all the bishops, and even for my feeble self, a weak old man. And when we had consecrated the holy church in the name of God and of St. George, the Presentor, saying the songs in the proper order, and the emperor and his nobles and the whole city were with us. And after the emperor and the whole multitude had sat down, he commanded the martyrdom of the St. George to be read. For that day was the 23rd of Pharmathy, and we listened breathlessly. But when the reader came to that place where God testified to St. George, saying, There is none like unto thee among all the martyrs, neither shall there be any like unto thee forever, the subject puzzled me, and I said, Since so many generals and eparchs and governors of this world have forsaken all the glory of this world and their rank and wealth, and have died for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ under the impious and lawless Emperor Diocletian, how can his, this holy martyr be more exalted than they all? When we had celebrated the Holy Communion, and the evening had come, we lighted a lamp for the Emperor, and lay down to sleep, and neither the Emperor nor any of the others did eat, but he slept with us in the Holy Church. Now it was the evening of the Lord's day, for the consecration of the church took place on the Sabbath day. And when the night had come, and we had, as was met, performed the office for the night, and had said, Amen, we sat down to speak of the mightiness of God, and the emperor came with us. And one of our fathers, a bishop, was taken up to heaven in a vision. And he saw most exalted mysteries, the which it is not lawful for any earthly being to utter. He said, I saw that I was standing before the throne of the Father, and I saw thousands of thousands and myriads of myriads praising the Holy Trinity, and coming in bands, and they worshipped God, and glorified Him, and blessed Him, and made their request, and afterwards they stood in rows, and no earthly creature could describe the glory and the great honor which they had received from the Trinity. And I saw one coming forth from within the veil like unto a king, wearing a diadem of gold with seven crowns upon it, and he was riding upon a white horse, and he was many times brighter than the sun, and was equipped with sword and armor and the apparel of a king. In short, his kingly dignity was immeasurable. And when he came forth, a mighty multitude followed him on this side and on that. And I saw all the saints bowing down before him. And when I looked, I was speechless, and I wished to know who he was. And I looked on my right hand, and I saw a monk standing, having wings like an angel of God. And he wore a kingly crown and raiment the like of which there is not among the kingdoms of the world. And he had a golden staff in his right hand, and his face was full of joy, and great glory surrounded him. And I besought him, saying, My father, I beseech thee to show me who thou art, that art in such honor as this. And he embraced me and said to me, I am Paul of Tama, and well hast thou come, O shepherd of our true king our Lord Jesus Christ. And when he had said these things to me, I rejoiced that I had found freedom of speech before him. And I said to him, O Master, my Holy Father, inasmuch as thou hast deemed me worthy of thy holy salutation, I beseech thee to tell me who is this great king that has just come, to whom all this multitude has bowed the knee. Then the blessed man broke into a spiritual smile, and said to me, Knowest not thou not who this is? And I said to him, Father, how should I know who this is, since I have never seen him before? He answered and said to me, I have been sent to thee to make thee certain 
of the things which thou didst ponder over in thy heart yesterday in the church concerning St. George, the beloved of God, the chosen martyr exalted, exalted above all the saints, according to the words of the Savior. The works of every soul which comes forth from the body, whether righteous men or whether of sinners, are manifested forth on the spiritual tablet of the soul, is in it itself present always, and its deeds are written upon it. When it pleased my Lord Jesus Christ to take me, his servant, to my rest and to visit me, I came forth from the world, and he esteemed me worthy of his goodness, and he brought me into his city, and I saw this being whom thou hast seen, and he had on this royal diadem, with seven crowns above it, and I looked upon it and read the writing which was upon it, which said, I am George of Melitini, from Diospolis, who died three times for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I saw all the saints bowing their knees before him. Now I had endured many things, sufferings, for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and died four times. And I said within myself, Behold, I am equal to him in honor. And I refrained from bending the knee to him. And straightway, in a moment, he who knows the hearts of all men sent the archangel Michael to me, who said, O oh, excellent Paul, why hast thou not taken part in the spiritual salutation according to thy command of the Almighty? And I told him what was in my heart. Then he took me immediately to the holy Appa Nub, the confessor, who had been both a monk and a martyr, and who showed him the command of God. Holy Confessor said to me, O Paul, my Holy Father, go and perform the command of God, and say not, I have suffered like the mighty George. For thou, ha thou of thine own free will did suffer greatly, but, just, but that just man did for God's sake suffer by axes, by double-edged hatchets, by saws, by nails, by fire, by two-edged swords, and by the mouths of wild beasts. And I saw unto thee, O my beloved, one, that when the attendant cometh and saith unto thee, The Lord calleth for thee, Come, is not thy going better than seventy years of a monk's life in his cell? When I heard these things, I changed my mind through the words of the archangel and the holy man, and I said, Forgive me, and they rejoiced with me. And I went to the holy martyr of Christ, and straightway made abeyance before him. And the holy man said, O faithful shepherd of Christ, console thyself, for there is no one like unto thyself among the martyrs who are crowned except St. George himself. And while the holy man, Paul of Tama, was talking with me, St. George, the soldier of Christ, came up to me with his face beaming with rays of light. And he saluted me and filled me with joy and gladness and said to me, When thou goest to thy city, Ankira, build thou a temple to me in it, that I may come and dwell with thee. For it will be one hundred and five months before thou shalt come to me in this holy city. When he had said these things to me, I rose up straightway from my vision. When the emperor and the twelve bishops saw the radiant face of that bishop, they knew that he had seen a revelation. They entreated him to tell them what he had seen. And he, as his mind came to him, told them all the vision he had seen. And they marveled greatly and glorified God and the holy martyr St. George. And the emperor answered and said, on the day when God seated me, unworthy though I be, upon the Roman throne, I saw with my sinful eyes St. George, with glorious visage, come from heaven holding a scepter of gold in his right hand, and the archangel Michael was with him, and I saw a diadem of gold and seven crowns upon his head, and he shone a thousand times brighter than the sun, and he came to me filled with joy, and took hold of me seated me upon the imperial throne, and a number of the nobles of the army saw him face to face, and 
And I saw him again in his holy church. And he showed me things that would do, that would do good to my soul. Now, when I, Theodotus, heard these things, I blessed my Lord Jesus and his holy martyrs. After these things, that bishop went to his city and built a beautiful church in the name of God and St. George and consecrated it with his own hands before he came out of the body. Now, that bishop was one of the 318 bishops that were gathered together in Nicaea, and he filled the office of bishop for 75 years, and he died in God when he was 108 years old. Behold now, O beloved brethren, we have told you these things of the great honors which God has vouchsafed to the valiant soldier of strength, the mighty athlete St. George, whose festival was celebrated this day throughout all earth and heaven, and of the remainder of his glory, and of the mighty and exalted honor he holds in the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of Christ, the King. And now, O beloved, blessed of God, since we know of a truth that St. George has drawn nigh to God in this manner, and has obtained freedom to enter into the presence of the Holy Trinity at all times, and to show for favor to everyone, let us make ourselves champions through love of our poor brethren and strangers. Let us love one another. Let us keep innocence in it. And it shall come to pass to all of us, O beloved, that St. George will, through our Lord Jesus Christ, show favor to us and have compassion upon us. For forgive us, our Lord, our sins, and bless the gathering together of our people, small and great, old men and young men, widows and virgins, and finally may he bless him that took the charge of preparing this book and of finishing it in the true suffering through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom be glory, meet for God, and his good Father, the holy and vivifying consubstantial spirit who are with him now and ever, now and always, and to the eternity of all eternities. Amen.